example of its kind, it was attitudes of Pakistani women towards help seeking. And what I found in that dissertation is the way we are raised, like you're talking about. We are raised very protective. And then, what is the role of the women? She carries the honor of the family. Honor and shame is a very big part of our culture. Have you ever heard somebody saying, and I see this all, all the time, even now, you talk to somebody, oh, how many kids do you have? And they would say, oh, I have a daughter, I have a son. And you praise the daughter, oh, your daughter is very smart, or your daughter is very beautiful. And you know what the mom would say? In Urdu, can somebody guess? <laughs> I think you know the answer. <laughs> yes, I don't know. Uh -huh. No, I can not guess. <laughs> the mom would say, Allah's ki kismat They don't say that about their sons. They say that only about the daughter. Have you heard it? Bas dua kare, Allah uski kismat achi kare. Which means women are passive recipients. They are recipients to the faith. Jaisi uski kismat hogi, bas uske saath ye acha ho jai. We have to be passive and wait for good fortune to come to us. And if bad fortune comes to us, too bad. So, because the women have this burden of carrying the honor of the family, if something happens to the woman and she can she cannot save her marriage, what's gonna happen? Her little younger sisters are not gonna get married. It's gonna bring shame to the family. It's gonna be the talk of the town. So she has to do everything to keep this marriage. I personally have friends who are physicians who are doctors, and they are in abusive relationships. These women have no financial problems because they are physicians themselves. They cannot leave these relationships. You know what? Several reasons. When they were younger, they had to worry about their parents and their brothers and sisters because it would bring shame. Now they're older. They have teenage children. They cannot get out now because their daughters will not get married. <coughs> so they're waiting for their daughters to get married. Because nobody would marry the, marry the daughter if the mom is divorced. People don't talk about the father divorced. They talk about the mother divorced. So the, so the woman starts feeling this learned helplessness. She feels like something is wrong with me. There is a saying that is in the movies, that is in the stories, and you might have heard this. Tumari is going to say, I'm sorry, Brother Anas, excuse myself, but these are some very big sayings in the community. Is going to say, Doli nikle, Doli jarehi hai, is going to say, Janaza nikle, all the women are nodding. You are married in this household, but you can only come out as a dead body. There is a saying that this is the advice that mothers give to their daughters on the day of the marriage. So I have a physician uh, who is a client of mine and she said, well, that I was told that on the day of my marriage and she had, there was no physical abuse, but there was intense emotional and sexual abuse. And uh, I wanna talk about the other kinds of abuses also and how you can recognize it. And then I wanna talk about the cycle of your abuse. I don't wanna take too much time though. So I feel like there's so much I wanna talk about in so little time. So this physician, she was in this abusive relationship and she could not leave. And she was in that marriage for 12 years until the, finally the husband cheated and she had to leave. And you know what happened? She got remarried. She had no intention of getting uh, remarried again, but circumstances she got remarried and she's again in an abusive relationship. And she comes to me, this is a highly educated woman very beautiful, very smart, and she said, oh my God, I'm a failure. I, I, I couldn't keep two marriages. Something's terribly wrong with me. It causes anxiety, it causes depression, it causes a syndrome called post-traumatic stress disorder. And post-traumatic stress disorder is what happens to veterans of war, people who come, the soldiers who come out you know, Iraq war or Afghanistan war, they are the ones who suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder. And it's a very serious disorder. But these women, 
are suffering from it. There is one research that is saying that women in the shelters, domestic violence shelters, about 40 to 80 percent of women in domestic violence shelters today are suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. So you can understand why the woman stays in it. Uh, and children, I want to talk about the children. Uh, the children, uh, I have a friend right now who is in an abusive relationship and she has two daughters. One is getting very depressed and the other one is very angry. And the woman doesn't understand it. The whole life, the daughters have seen this physical, uh, there was physical, sexual, the daughters didn't see the sexual piece, that there was physical, sexual and emotional abuse. The daughter did see the physical and the emotional abuse, but one of the daughters, she, she hates her mother. And she's very angry at the mother, and I'm going to tell you why. You know what? That daughter is scared. She is identifying with the aggressor. Because she's scared that she would become like her mother. And that fear is making her get very angry at the mother. So now she's acting out. Because she would rather be somebody like her father, who has power and control, who wants to be victimized. So she's angry mother for being a victim and you know what the mother put up with all this because of the daughters now it's messing up the daughter's life and do you think these girls would know how to get along with their spouses they wouldn't actually they can become abusers themselves there are two, th two things typically that happen you are either acting in or acting out when you are very upset when you're depressed some people they get depressed but some people they get angry and they act now these girls are at high risk of actually becoming boy crazy. Why am I saying that? Because their self-esteem will be so low that they will find, try to find self-esteem through their relationship with boys and they would get into abusive relationships. They will be actually getting attracted to boys who have potential of abuse. Okay, now I wanna, yeah, I did talk about the Physical abuse, that's easy, right? The scars are there, you could see it. Actually, it's better. I prefer physical abuse over the other kinds of abuse because you have a scar, you have a reason, you go to your mom and say, look what you did to me. And the mom would be like, oh yes. But it is very hard to, to uh, prove emotional abuse. Oh, he's putting me down, he's yelling at me, he is constantly humiliating me in public. Well, he's giving you food, clothing, and shelter. What else do you want? <laughs> and the women are laughing, right? And then this sexual abuse. What is sexual abuse? You asked me the question. It is forced sex. Um, and it could be acts of sex that are unsafe. Or it could be unwanted or degrading. I, I did have a client, you know, she was talking about some sexual acts that he was doing, which were actually very un-Islamic, but she submitted to that. Um, I had one client who came to me, I'm giving you stories because it just makes it more real. One client came to me, and uh, of, this was a very young couple, right, in their 20s, and the husband was having emotional affairs, and the woman didn't feel going to bed with him when she found out and he said uh, the angels are uh, you heard that uh, when you refuse sex the angels are you know humiliating the angels are mad at you so this was a very religious woman and she came to me and she said is that true I'm so scared you see how religion and culture gets so intertwined and gets so mixed up. So this, this woman is feeling guilty and she's feeling something's wrong with her. So she's submitting, she's submitting to it. And then what happens? She gets very angry. So this woman who was in her 20s, you know what she did? She says, I don't know, I just couldn't take it any longer because I kept taking that abuse. And one day I just couldn't take it. I called up my friend and we went to a bar and I got drunk. There, was, there had to be some outlet. And then after getting drunk, she had never drunk in her life. She was a very religious woman. After getting drunk, she felt even guilty. She felt worse, and look what happens. The cycle continues. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit about the abuse cycle. I don't know if you could see this. 
there is abuse. After the abuse comes guilt. So the abuser, it is really hard to leave the abuse and I want to explain it to you. There's a cycle of abuse. After the abuse, there is guilt. So the abuser feels guilty. Now, what's very interesting is that, are they feeling guilty because they abused you? No, no, no. They're feeling guilty because they got caught. Hmm. After the guilt, they're going to make an excuse why they did it. And the excuse typically blames the victim. You know what? You didn't cook good food. Or, oh, one of my clients, she got divorced because um, the roti's burned. You, you don't know how to please a man. I came home, I'm tired, I'm exhausted, you should have pleased me. Or you're this or you're that. Um, they make an excuse, which me, which the excuse is kind of, you made this happen. You triggered my anger. It's the alcohol. You, somebody asked me about that. You, you asked me about that. It's the alcohol. It's not me. I lose control when I'm drinking. So you need to understand that. And you need to get me the help. So they make an excuse. After the excuse, it's the behavior is normal. So this is why it is so hard to recognize and leave the abuse. Because it's not the behavior is not always abusive. It becomes normal after a while. Okay, you know what? It was the alcohol. I'm not this kind of a man. They can bring flowers. They can be extra nice and things go back to normal. And when things go back to normal, the victim forgets hmm, that it ever happened. The problem is that it doesn't stay normal. Then there is fantasy. The abuser starts fantasizing, which means he started thinking how I can do this again, because he, he, he thinks about the past abuses. He thinks about the past behaviors. And then there is a setup. Let me give you an example. There's a setup where the woman will behave or the victim will behave in a way that will make the abuser get angry again and the abuse will start all over again. There is one research that a victim leaves eight or nine times before she finally leaves the abuser. Why is that? Because she's very confused. I would rather have this abuser act like this all the time. It would be so much easier. But they don't act like this all the time. So you understand this learned helplessness, this cycle of abuse. They don't. So it's very hard for a woman and she starts personalizing it. Now, the why is the abuser doing it? It's about power. It's about control. Studies have shown that these, the perpetrators have really a very poor sense of self-esteem. And they feel powerful when they can dominate somebody who's weaker. So coming back to your alcohol question, uh, I want to make sure I answer the question. He needs help for the alcohol, but he needs to take responsibility for his behavior. There is tons of help out there. And you know what? He knows that. We as a community need to take action. We as a community. Why don't all of us look around? I am sure because I have found people that I'm very close to. Besides my clients, I found my personal, my friends or my relatives who are in abusive re relationships. Why don't we all take responsibility to look around ourselves and help those women? We, the question was what, what should we do? We need to look for signs. Is this woman always scared? all the time. Does she get calls all the time? Like when she's out, she's getting calls. Where are you? Who are you with? That, that's a sign. Um, money is, is a big form of control. She never has access to money. What the abuser does is dominance. That's a big one. Isolation. That's a very big one. You don't you isolate them. You keep them away from the rest of the world. And they, they learn to believe that they deserve it. I had an Indian woman, and she said her whole life, she was told that her color is very dark. So 
So even growing up, when she was a young girl and she used to get proposals, she wouldn't get good proposals because she was a darker color. So she grew up, she's a very smart woman by the way, she grew up having low self-esteem. Then she got into this marriage and uh, there was no physical abuse, there was only emotional abuse. He was extremely controlling. She didn't recognize it. She thought it's because, you know, she just deserves it. She doesn't deserve anything good. The result of the abuse could be depression, anxiety, post-traumatic stress disorder, and a lot of other problems. Sakina, 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 Sakina.